thank you very much and a very good day to you, uh, uh, Mr. Watts, uh, uh, the commander of regional division uh, three. Just want to take the time to talk to you a little bit about uh, what is actually happening as it relates to uh, the, as we know it, it's called the Music and Dance Dancing License Act. But before we do get there, uh, what seems to be a little bit of confusion is the fact that uh, sometime uh, last month, uh, just before uh, we celebrated Mashamani, uh, government uh, would have announced uh, the uh, lifting of the the COVID uh, restrictions. Um, uh, so the, the place is technically opened uh, 24 hours uh, free movement. There's no, no longer any restrictions. Lots of people seem to think, well, because of that, uh, it means it's a party can happen. And as such, a lot of that has been happening. And um, in many instances, if it is that the police uh, would go to actually uh, shut them down or close them off, uh, they are met with resistance and problems. I want you to be able to you know, highlight a little bit about where there's a misunderstanding. Good morning to you, Stan. I'm very pleased to be associated with this program to clear the air on what is expected of the populace when it comes to the relaxation of the core few. Well, part of the police's responsibility is the maintenance of law and order. And during the core few, the task force was strictly tasked with regulating what is happening and how it should happen and so on. Now that the core few has been relaxed, it's solely the Guyana Police Force's responsibility to ensure that law and order is maintained. That means that any public activity that is held, any part in the country, the police must first have an application for those activities. And those applications will be investigated to see whether the function that is applied for is um, suitable to be held wherever it, it, it is supposed to be held, and there are certain legal requirements that are required that the police must check on. One of which, if the functions are held in a building, the building must have the requisite approval from the fire service as to fire um, escape routes. It must have, if it's in Georgetown or in the rural areas, they must have a structural soundness certificate and if it's real a barbecue or something like that will be held and the barbecue is going to be made on the premises, the persons who are handling that for barbecue must have food landlord certificate and such like. When those requisites uh, documents are obtained by the police, the police will have to conduct an investigation. By going into the area, questioning persons, let, let them know what is the application that are in possession of the police, and then an investigation will be done. Those applications will be submitted to the commanders across the country. And when those applications reach the commander's desk, the commanders will then, based on the music and dancing license approval, um, the laws will take that application two weeks prior to a magistrate of the respective districts with a recommendation as to whether these functions should be held or not be held a recommendation the magistrate's authority now is to grant those approvals. Okay, so if um, based on what you say, uh, we're gonna come back a little bit to all of uh, this aspect here, but according to what we see in the, the, the Gazette that speaks about uh, the, 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 the relaxation um, of, of the curfew, it still also indicated that um, one part of uh, the, uh, that gazette did mention that persons um, should not be operating private parties. Uh, they should not be operating certain kinds of events. But seems to be a misunderstanding by many uh, that because 
there's no curfew. Yes, you could actually go ahead and do these things. And not only that, but do these things without actually getting the prerequisites that you just mentioned. Under, under the music and dancing license, that chapter 22, three, any function, even those premises that are licensed, they have to notify the nearest police station of their intention to hold a function. And having notified the police 24 hours before, the police has a responsibility to monitor those functions to ensure the maintenance of law and order. Um, those uh, persons who feel that they can gather on the road or in some creek or in some place and, and just play music and have their, and imbibe their wrong, those things are not prohibited and are, are not allowed, they're prohibited. And um, that is part of the police function to regulate every activity in the country. And therefore, given, so, so what are some of the, the, the things you would say um, to persons that they should not be participating in or seeking to actually host at this time? They should not be um, in terms of the danger. They should not be drinking and driving. They should not be playing loud music in the areas we pursue, residential areas, to the annoyance of persons, because this affects persons mentally and otherwise. And um, it's one's right to enjoy themselves, but at the same time, not at the expense of another. So um, people need to be civil in their approaches to en entertainment. We have no problem with how persons uh, behave within their confines of their home without disturbing another. But when you come to public entertainment, you have to conduct yourself in a manner that is uh, within the, the, the legal framework. All right. Commander, earlier you talked about um, uh, when a person, if it is that they are to apply for uh, a license um, uh, to the police and to uh, the magistrate, uh, that's a court to, to get permission to hold certain outdoor events. Um, one of the questions that many persons have is that if it is that they have permission, let's say from a magistrate to have an, uh, an activity, um, what would actually cause the police to come to that activity when it is being um, held and shut it down? What well, is the experience? When functions are, are approved by the magistrate, there's only one aspect. The police commander in charge of the various region has a responsibility to ensure that those functions that are approved are properly policed, right? So even though the magistrate approve a function for let's say 2, 2 a.m. in the morning or 1 a.m. or whatever time, 12 noon, right? If there are complaints within those same approval in terms of within those premises, the police has a duty to visit there, contact the host or the person who's um, may, um, playing the music and inquire and upon the police objective assessment, police have to take action. And depend on what the uh, complaint is, the police can either uh, deal with the situation if it's possible, right on the ground and have the music continue, or if there's a case where it's so um, serious, the police could have the music stop before the time that was approved by the magistrate. And the arena has to discourse. What about those, uh, those what, you, what we call uh, 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 the, 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 the places that would have um, license, um, the liquor and the dance license, which they apply for on a yearly basis? If it is, um, is this applicable to them too for, let's say, a specific event? A man has a bar, he, he applied and he got a license that, you know, covered him, covers him for an entire year. But then he rents out or sublets the place for an activity to someone else. 
uh, do they have to get a special separate license for that particular activity, even though he has a license that covers him for the entire year? Yes, well, uh, for example, if a person has a license for the entire, a music and dancing license for the entire year, let's say 2022, right? And they have a function, the, a special function, they have to notify the police at least 72 hours before of the special activity so that the police will be in a position to monitor what is happening there. And if we anticipate that there will be a crowd at that place, for example, if you have a foreign artist coming in and so on, even though the place has a license, the police need to be in, uh, informed so that they can monitor and regulate the activity. And more so, if it's a foreign artist coming in, there's a special arrangement where the, the, the um, commissioner of police or the divisional commander must be informed in writing so that special arrangement can be put in place to regulate that particular function. This, however, is also in tandem with uh, the current uh, gazetted COVID measures which stipulate that even if it is that you have, let's say, um, let me just say for the want of, uh, let's say the national park, you'd like to keep an event at the national park. Um, you go, a person goes through that. The capacity of the national park is generally, um, prior to COVID, it is generally, let's say, 5,000. Um, but because of COVID measures, as it did say, you still have to have the, um, the, the, the physical distancing in, in place and so on. What would be the recommended capacity for persons to be able to take in, because obviously, and on one hand, um, some business people, the more tickets they sell, the better for them. That is how they're going to make money. And if it is that they have a crowd, and you turn up and you decide to uh, shut down, they, they they say that uh, well, the police is harassing them or targeting them. How do you deal with that? Well, first of all, I like to advise members of the public that if you have a functioning national park they must have approval from the authorities of the national park to host that function, along with other documents, fire service and other documents. All the persons going to that function must have in their possession the national ID card and the COVID vaccination card to see that they're fully vaccinated. And the purpose of having your COVID card and your ID card is to ensure that the person who is passing through the screen area is the same person who, who, is, who is in possession of the ID card with the photographic representation and in respect to the crowd. I would leave that aspect to determined by the commander of that division and the host of the function to agree on a mutually agreed position, keeping it into our consideration the spacing of the national park. That persons can be on the tarmac and persons can be in the stands. I would not like to go to a number that is authorized um, at, at each venue. I will leave that at the, at the discretion of the commander based on what the law says. How would you, what would you say to those persons who therefore uh, wouldn't want to turn away patrons who are turning up, um, who have the prerequisite um, ID and uh, COVID cards. Um, what and it would seem as if it's be beyond the numbers that they should have there. I would ask that during the promotion of the activity, persons are told early to make their purchases of tickets early. And when the ticket sale reaches the authorized number at the National Park, the uh, selling of those tickets should be ceased so that we don't have confusion. Those persons who are throwing up to go to the function without buying tickets in advance should be spoken to also in a public uh, notice and there should be systems in place to have them go to the respective one, don't gather around the place, just to ensure the maintenance of law and order. 
That is how I see it. There are certain areas prior to the, the relaxation of the, uh, the curfew, um, there were certain activities that the police had to be policing, um, which also included um, private residences, um, private parties being held at homes. Uh, is this still a problem? And if it is that it is happening in a private home, um, what advisor, advisory would you put out there? What I would say, if persons are having a party at a private home, they, they must consider spacing. That's what they should consider first. And I would say the word private means family. The party should be comprising of family members who are properly uh, within that private space. And they must not play music loud and continuous to annoyance of the neighbor or anybody else in the neighborhood. Of course, the conduct must be within the civil, civil realm, right? conduct themselves within the civil realm in a very orderly manner and they can have their parties, they, they eat and they drink, whatever. And I don't have a problem with that. The police would not have a problem with that. But when you have a party to private residence and there's a large music box or a small music box that is playing very loud with amplified music, that will certainly disturb the other neighbor who has the children who has to study, who has to get a rest to go to work next day and, and, and things like that. So your, 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 your private residence, you must have private parties, but it must not be of a nuisance to the neighbors and residents in the general neighborhood. Some people, they have private parties and they're talking very loud, using all types, types of explicit clips, and that by itself can be a nuisance. Commander, as it relates to open spaces now, um, uh, public open spaces. What is the posture of the Ghana Police Force as it relates to that at this time? Persons can go to public open spaces, grounds and so on and have their functions. They could, they could exercise, they could have various games and so on. They could have their little baskets and so on and sit down with their family and watch on persons playing football or cricket or whatever the sport they choose and so on. But um, we would not want those public spaces to be overpopulated in, to such an extent to be impeded on the, on the COVID-19 guidelines, breach of social distancing and so on. It must be done in a very orderly manner. And um, of course, um, we have a responsibility to pass and see what's happening there. And where there are breaches, the, the police will so advise. God, they have police patrols are equipped with radio sets, so when they observe things, they can call into the operations room and report it, and they'll be guided accordingly. Based on what information they provide, we will advise them in the senior administration of the police force. All right. The COVID guidelines uh, make measure that um, it is, uh, as a matter of fact, um, just giving you a little quote from that, um, it says, when it comes to restrict, there is restriction on social activities. No person shall host, attend, or visit A, a private party, uh, B, a banquet, ball, or reception, C, a water park, D, a wake or vigil, E, a club or discotheque, F, a meeting of a fraternal society, private or social club or civic association or organization or G, any other social activity. And uh, part two says no person shall promote a private party. While part three says no recreational activity shall be allowed on any river, creek, beach, and internal waters. Stand right away, dear, 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 dear. This is just a precautionary uh, guideline for persons. For example, if you're going to have a party in a, in a pool or in a creek and you're drinking alcohol, your, your, your sanity level is not normal. 
So what we're trying to do here, this, what the regulation is trying to do here, is trying to ensure that our people are safe. Because if they go and drink on a, at a creek or in some boat ride or something like that from private park in a river, and they imbibe, they're endangering them. So if they fall overboard, they're not wearing a life jacket and those things. They're likely to be drowned. In. So um, if you need to have a, a private party, the police must be notified at least two weeks in advance so we can process your application and advise you in keeping with the guideline. Okay. Now, uh, Commander, one of the other things that we see um, as uh, happening is that oftentimes, this is one of the things that happens, is that so the police goes to um, John Public uh, one, and let's say they're having an activity and shuts them down for whatever is the breach. But the first thing um, is that they make complaint that, well, look, this person is having, or look, somebody having, why don't you go there? How would you deal with that? Or what would you say about that? I wish to advise the public that when a party of a party of policemen turns up at your place in relation to a complaint, it is not for you to inform them of someone else's function. The police is dealing with that particular function and the complaint was made based on um, concerns from members of the public. We are dealing with that particular function. If you have information that someone, somewhere else has a function and the police should intervene, communicate the, 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 the complaint that you have, and the police know what to do. The police can't deal with your situation and the person complain at the same time. We have to prioritize our issues. So we will deal with your the complaint that we, 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 we are sent to deal with, and we take the information in a very professional way, and at some subsequent time, we will deal with the other complaint. But do not create further conflict between you and the police by trying to Infor that the police is dealing with your situation and not the other situation. All the situations we dealt with, where the police decide to close you down, accept your close down, or face the consequence of, of a, a summons and prosecution. And the police cannot leave your function continuing and say, we're going to summon you. We have to stay there and ensure that law and order is maintained. If the club has to close, the persons, we have to stay there a while to ensure the persons disperse in a very safe manner and so that we can ensure that when we leave, the function doesn't continue. Let's um, turn to another aspect and ask, you know, how would you advise uh, members of the public who uh, claim that they see, um, they make a report about, let's say, a noise nuisance at a particular spot? And they claim that they see um, a police uh, vehicle come, but then they collect a package or they collect drinks and then they leave. And when they leave, um, it continues again. And uh, so they are disturbed continually. What advice would you give to um, citizens who make such um, allegations? Our responsibility is to serve members of the public. And I wish we should say it very clearly that the policy of the Guyana Police Force in respect to the Susans is what we, will, we may call a zero tolerance approach. So as long as a report is made, there's a special occurrence book at each police station in the operations room where these reports are documented. And all the reports are attended to by the police with a view to ensure that we provide proper service to the, to the members of the populace by visiting the scene ascertaining where the uh, noise is coming from and take the appropriate action to prevent the continuation of the breach. And uh, it's very unprofessional for any member of the force to go on a report in their official capacity, whether in uniform or in plain clothes, and to be taking packages from those uh, persons who are of nuisance to members of the public that is unacceptable. That is a behavior that we will not condone and we will ensure as far as practicable when we get those complaints, we will involve the Office of Professional Responsibility in the various divisions 
to investigate and when we find that there is evidence, we will take very stern action against those members of the force. That is not what the Commission of Police expects of us. That is not what the public expects of us. They expect us when we get reports and we go on these reports, we act very professionally to prevent the continuation of these offenses. So I like to caution the policemen and women all across this country that their conduct must reflect what our SOPs are saying. Act professionally, act ethically, and act lawfully. That is all we have to do. And ultimately, I want you to be able to address uh, the situation again, which is a sore point um, for, for some persons. Um, so what would you say is, despite the fact that we there, there is no longer a curfew, what is the time that the Ghana police force will reasonably allow for anyone that is having a party? Um, and what is the difference between um, those public uh, concerts as opposed to those clubs or bars in terms of how late they can open? Well, based on my knowledge and experience in the Guyana Police Force, all those special parties permission would have been sought from the magistrates. For example, some of those juvets and all those functions, permission was granted for those persons to hold a function at the time when these functions were held. It is very wrong of anyone to, to say that X function went 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. and their function were closed at midnight. That is wrong. That's not the authority of the members of the public. But that, that is a legal authority entrusted to the host by the magistrate and the, and, and the police respects that. So uh, let us understand where we, what we should, how we should operate in a civil society, and let us don't look upon our neighbor and then make comparison. The police know exactly what they're, what they're tasked to do, and they will enforce the law based on what the approval says. For example, most of the clubs, they have a music and dancing license for the year, they have their GRE license to sell liquor. Some can sell on the premises. Some are off license. Whatever those licenses are specified in terms of timings, that is what the police work with, right? Those licenses ought to be placed conspicuously at the door entrance of the premises so that any policeman in uniform can go there without disturbing the activity, check on the timings and make a note and remove himself. So all those things are entered in our miscellaneous books at police stations across this country. And where we don't have those information, we seek to have them and record them. So the police know what they do. We are here to serve the people and we are doing it to the best of our ability in a very professional way. Let the public trust us with this responsibility. We have been doing it for, doing it for, for over 180 something years. And we, we always do it professionally. Finally, uh, uh, Mr. Watts, uh, what would you say? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, still, despite uh, the, 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 the curfew being uh, lifted, um, COVID is still um, a very present and real danger uh, to Guyanese. Um, and uh, as such, uh, according to uh, the, the gazetted COVID guidelines, there are certain restrictions. In tandem with what the laws of Ghana says as it relates particularly to the Music and Dancing License Act, um, which if I'm to say is chapter 23 or three uh, of uh, the act of 1907 and um, amended 2013. What would you say at this juncture in our country given all that is happening with COVID, um, should persons do to make sure that they remain safe and to abide um, by the, the, the rules of the Ghana Police Force? Um, I wish, I'm very happy, not I wish, I'm very happy that you have provided this platform for me to advise my fellow Guyanese. What I would like to tell them, Fellow Guyanese, you need to have your, vaccine, your vaccines 
your first and second dose, your booster, when, when it's appropriate, you must wear your face mask at all times. You must maintain social distancing and ensure that the persons who are gathered with in a party are the persons who you want to be associated with. If you go to the, um, the uh, washroom facility, ensure that after using the washroom facility, you have your, your hands properly sanitized. And this is also a responsibility host of those functions to have proper sanitary facilities in place for the persons to utilize during their, 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 uh, their, during their visit to your premises. Ensure that you have proper systems upon entry of all patrons to be vaccinated and they have the temperature tested. And when they're in the party, if they have to use the washroom or any of the facilities in there, there are proper systems in place for them to have their hands properly sanitized and stay within the confines of the table that you're occupying and don't mix the too many persons in there um, to, to get yourself uh, um, in danger of being high at risk of, of contracting COVID. COVID is still real and we should still be responsible citizens to ensure that we um, ease the rapid spread of COVID. It's very dangerous. Many lives have been lost. It's very much unfortunate, but we hope that persons can be more responsible. Both is the patrons, as well as the, the occupier or the uh, owner of premises where functions are being. All right. Mr. Watts, I'd like to say thank you very much. Um, any final thoughts before we go? I wish to thank you for providing me the opportunity to educate the populace on this very important issue. I have been following all these issues in the press and I'm concerned and I'm glad that the police uh, was able to host this function, this particular uh, program so that our public can be educated and we could have the, the best cooperation from members of the public in this regard. We are here to serve you, but you have a responsibility to ensure that you be responsible and operate within the confines of the law. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Senior Superintendent uh, Watts, who is Commander of Regional Division 3. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us here um, on the Police and You as we continue to educate. Do have a good day.